invite our first speaker, which is uh, Professor Saket Saurabh, who has joint affiliations with both Institute of Mathematical Sciences, Chennai, and University of Bergen. Uh, Bergen. So, uh, Saket, it's over to you now. Uh, thanks, Pateva. So, let's, uh, let's get started. And the first lecture is about uh, parametrized algorithms and complexity. And this is based on the old slides of Daniel, which uh, we made. Uh, for the purposes of introducing the field and the kind of research which is being done. So this talk is going to be light because it's just going to tell you the kind of questions we ask and the kind, uh, and the kind of problems we consider. Uh, so uh, we all know that if, LP, if some problem is NP hard, then uh, for all practical purposes, all that it means that no algorithm solves all instances optimally in polynomial time. But what we'd like to say, what about the easy instances? We understand that uh, all instances cannot be solved, but what about the easy instances of the same problem? And the next important question is how to capture the notion of easy instances, okay? And that is where uh, our field comes in. And the most important question that we ask, size matters, but how much? The bit size of the input instance is never the only thing that affects the running time of an algorithm. For an example, uh, we know that BFS, DFS takes order n plus m. Uh, look at subset sum. If we know that the target is, uh, target is much small, then we can derive an algorithm of running time order n into t, which is polynomial if t is polynomial. But we know that in general, if uh, the target sum is exponential, then this running time is exponential. And this is what, uh, should be expected of because the problem is NP hard. Uh, look at KSAT. We know that uh, as KSAT, look at the running time of this algorithm, two to the power n into one minus one by k. So if you notice that as k progressively becomes larger, the instances become difficult and difficult because the running time becomes worse and worse. Uh, similarly, k click. So if you're looking for a three click, three size click, the running time is n to the power five, but if you're looking for a 10 size click, it is n to the power 12. So click in general is NP hard, uh, subset sum in general is NP hard, uh, sat is NP hard, but uh, based on what instance we have of particular instances of these problems, uh, it could be polynomial time solvable or it could progressively become difficult. So apart from size, it also matters what the input instance look like. Okay, and parameterized complexity is all about measuring the running time of algorithms as a function of size and something else. Okay, and it is largely applied to NP hard problems, but it is, I just say largely, but uh, uh, over the years, people have tried to take the idea from parameterized complexity and try to do uh, the design algorithms also for problems that are solvable in polynomial time, example, max flow, matching, and uh, some other basic problems. So let's look at an example of vertex cover, okay? So input is a graph G in teaser K. And the question is, is there a vertex at S such that mod S is less than or equal to K and every edge has at least one endpoint in S, okay? So there's a naive algorithm that could try all possible subsets and check whether there is a vertex cover of size at most K or not that will take two power n, n square time algorithm. But even more naively, why do we need to check all subsets of size at most k? We could just very well check all sets of size k and check whether that forms a vertex cover or not. And this can be done in n to the power k plus two. So if you notice the first algorithm, he can't say anything, but the second algorithm is polynomial for every fixed k. Meaning if you're looking to design an algorithm for vertex cover of size at most 20, then this algorithm is going to run in time n to the power 22, which is polynomial. So this is what it means that polynomial for every fixed k. Or this is also called XP or slice wise polynomial. Okay. And or so basically XP means that given a problem and integer k, uh, is the problem solvable in running time f of k n to the power g of k. So the algorithm here is an XP algorithm where f of k just one, okay? okay? So now let us solve vertex cover in time order n plus m plus k to the power big O of k time, okay? So this is 
This comes from as old as uh, Bus before 93. And he came up with the following idea that vertices of degree K must be in solution. So maybe we, I should have said K plus one, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so what is the meaning of this? So let's say K plus one, okay. So if you have a vertex of degree K plus one, then, and you are looking for a vertex cover of size at most K. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here? No. Uh, this could be any function of f and g. But only thing is that it should depend on uh, uh, it should only depend on k. It should not depend on input size. So uh, this could be any function. So for example, f of k could be 2 power, 2 power, 2 power k and g of k could be, for example, log k or, or maybe this could also be equal to some f of k to the power k. So basically any function, but it should only be a function of k, not the function of the input side. Okay. Uh, okay, so here we are uh, back to uh, this vertex cover example. So we have this vertex cover of uh, degree uh, k plus one, then look, we are looking, if we are looking for a vertex cover of size at most k, then what can we say? Well, then if you do not pick this vertex, then you have to pick all the vertices, all its neighbors into a solution, but that has size k plus one or more. So that cannot lead to a vertex cover of size at most k, which means you better select this vertex and into your vertex cover of size at most k. So what reduction rule we will apply? We will pick this vertex, delete and decrease k by one. So vertices of degree zero, are they relevant for us? Well, no, because degree zero vertex are not going to uh, cover anything. So what we could do, we could just delete those vertices. Okay, what I can slide zero from current. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay, so we could also delete this. Now, after this, what do we know about this? Uh, we know that every vertex has degree at most k, which also implies that, look, it's like if I have a, if every vertex has degree at most k and I have a budget of at most k vertices, then how many edges can I cover? Each vertex can cover at most k edges. So in total, they could cover k square edges. So if the number of edges in my graph is more than k squared, strictly more than k squared, then what can I conclude? I can conclude that there is no vertex cover of size at most k and I can say it's a no instance, which implies that the number of, so if I cannot apply this reduction or I cannot apply this rule, then I know that the number of vertices of degree, uh, number of edges is upper bounded by K square. And hence the number of vertices could be at most two into K square. Why? Because every vertex is incident to some edge, because if it was not the case, then we would have applied this uh, degree zero uh, irrelevant vertex rule, okay? which implies the number of vertices in my graph is 2k square. So now I can do my brute force on this smaller instance, right? And hence the running time will be like k to the power big of k. So, so uh, right, because now n to the power big, so now n to the power k plus two algorithm is going to be some k to the power big O of k algorithm, right? Because now n has become k square, uh, 2k square. So even better, let uh, u be in, so we design an algorithm, let u be be in uh, edge, then what do I know about vertex cover? Well, if u be is an edge, uh, then either u is going to be in the solution or v must be in the solution. So that immediately leads to a following recursive algorithm for vertex cover. G has a vertex cover of size at most k, if and only if G minus u has a vertex cover of size at most k minus one or G minus V has a vertex cover of size at most K, K minus one, right? So this gives you a recursive algorithm. In one branch, you seek a solution containing U. In other branch, you seek a solution containing V, right? And if either of them returns that they have a vertex cover of size at most K, 
minus one, then we can say that look, G has a vertex cover of size at most k minus one, which contains that k minus one size solution. And uh, if the it was the branch with respect to G minus u, then you add u, and that forms a vertex cover of size k. If it is a branch that comes via v, then you add v to that solution, and you return a vertex cover of size at most k. If neither of the branches returns, or the neither of the recursive routines returns that it has a vertex cover of size at most k minus one, then you correctly conclude that G does not have a vertex cover of size at most k. So you can actually code this part of the algorithm. Actually, you can code this part of the algorithm and come up with an algorithm with, uh, right? But what is the running time of this algorithm? Well, look, so what are we doing? So initially, the parameter was k. You picked up an edge, uv, and you looked at here, g minus u, k minus one, g minus v, and k minus one. So recursively, you have decrease the parameter by one in the two branches, which means that if I uh, grow this tree, I will, in the next iteration, k will drop by k minus two. In the next iteration, k minus two will drop to k minus three, and so on and so forth. It implies that this uh, tree has how many nodes? Well, roughly two to the power k leaves, right? And since it is a binary tree, it has like order two power k nodes, and in each node, I'm going to spend some polynomial time. How? I need to find an edge if it exists, right? And then branch on them. So the total time spent for this problem is like two power k into n to the power c, right? So now we have got even a faster algorithm. And this was given by uh, my uh, Downey and Fellows. So he's Downey. And he's Fellows. And we will have a good opportunity to listen to fellows uh, with respect to history on 30th of December and how the field came about. So it is going to be another live talk. So you not like to miss that. Okay, so now let's combine the two methods. So what are the two methods? In the first method, what we did is that in polynomial time, we first reduce the instance such that everything become polynomial in K and then we apply the brute force. In the second method, uh, we just, found an edge and be branched. So what we could do, so pick vertices of degree greater than or equal to k plus one into the solution. This takes linear time, okay? Uh, and you got k prime at most k, number of edges was at most two k square. And then we apply this two power k in C time algorithm. But then what is the running time of this algorithm? Running time of this algorithm is order n plus m plus two power k into k power c, right? Same problem, now we have three algorithms, n to the power k plus two, uh, two power k into n plus m, n plus m plus two power k into k squared. This is xp. And this is same polynomial for every fixed k, right? So this is exactly what are called fixed parameter tractable. It is same polynomial for every fixed k, but in xp, it is not same polynomial for every fixed k. For example, what I mean, look at k equal to three. What is this algorithm? n to the power five. But if I put k equal to three, what is the polynomial dependence in these algorithms? Well, this is still n plus m. This is still n plus m. k equal to 100. This algorithm is going to be n to the power 102. But this algorithm is still going to be n plus m and n plus m, which implies that for a fixed k, the running time here has the same polynomial, but in xp, the polynomial varies as the k varies. So if we are able to design an algorithm where we achieve same polynomial for every fixed k, then this leads to the notion of fixed parameter tractable algorithm, right? So we can generalize this to uh, like not only two power k square algorithm, but FPT means designing an algorithm with running time f of k in n to the power c. Okay, uh, please feel free to ask like, Unmute yourself and ask question if you wish. It is perfectly fine with me. And that is also a reason why uh, uh, we are not in the webinar mode, but in the like Zoom talk mode. Okay, so in some sense, this looks even better than FPT, right? I mean, this is two power K into poly in N plus M. This is N plus M plus some F of K factors, like some additive F of K factor. Uh, so what can we say F of K into the power C versus F of K plus N to the power C? Well. 
in terms of asymptotically, they do not matter much. You can show that f of k plus n to the power c is definitely less than or equal to f of k n to the power c. But more importantly, you can also show that f of k n to the power c is upper bounded by f of k whole square plus n to the power 2. So you can just try whether f of k is less than this or n is less than f of k or n is more than f of k, right? And uh, this will happen, okay? So for example, what happens if you would have said, say, f of k is less than or equal to n to the power c. Uh, if f of k is less than or equal to n to the power c, then this term dominates, right? Because this is n to the power c, n to the power c, n to the power c. And if f of k is more than n to the power c, then what this becomes? f of k whole square, then this term dominates. So qualitatively, this additive and multiplicative FPT are the same concept, right? So, I mean, uh, asymptotically, they are same concept. It is not that we could have an FPT algorithm with this running time, f of k plus n to the power c running time, and we will not have an FPT algorithm, like we, we have an FPT algorithm with f of k n to the power c, and we will not have an FPT algorithm with running time, some another g of k plus n to the power c, right? I mean, we will have, it's just that the function will be worse than the normal f of k, okay? But these two concepts are qualitatively same. So the next question arises, are all problems XP? Are all problems FPT? So let's look at coloring. So input is a graph G, integer K. Question, is G properly K colorable? We all know that tree coloring is NP-complete, right? Now, what would mean, like, so if you had an XP algorithm for coloring, coloring, right, with parameter, say, K, what can you say? So even if you had some horrendous F of K, n to the power G of K algorithm, then for K equal to three, what is this? This is going to be some n to the power big O of one. This is a polynomial time. Right? This is a polynomial time. So having an XP algorithm would be polynomial time for k equal to three, which implies that coloring parameterized by k, the number of colors, cannot have even XP algorithm unless P equal to NP, right? So this is our first, uh, let's say, hardness result. So we cannot expect all problems to have an XP algorithm or an FPT algorithm. So here the picture so far. So here's an FPT, here's an XP, and graph coloring is beyond XP. So a natural question is, is anyone here a problem? So we know that vertex cover is FPT, we designed an algorithm. We saw a problem graph coloring, which is not even XP. So a natural question is, is there a problem which is in XP, but doesn't belong to FPT, okay? And answer is yes, of course there are, and there are plenty of them. So for example, look at the problem independent set. So in independent set, input is graph G, integer K. And the question is, is there a vertex set S such that cardinality of S is greater than or equal to K? Okay. Uh, is there a vertex set S such that uh, cardinality of S is at least K and no edge has both endpoint in S. So basically here is a picture. This is an independent set, but if I add an edge between two vertex, this is not an independent set, okay? So it's in XP, it has an algorithm with running time n to the power k into k square. How? You try all possible k size subset, and for this k square, k for these k vertices, check k square adjacencies, adjacencies, right? So this leads to n to the power k, k square algorithm. But is the problem FPT? Well, probably no, but how do we go about proving this? Well, so this is a world P and two power n to the power big O of one polynomial and here is an NP. 
and how do you show a problem may not have a polynomial time algorithm by showing that the problem is np complete meaning uh, basically what we show is that well there are several problems by showing problem np complete we basically say that look i don't know how to solve this problem but if we can show our favorite problem to be np complete or if i can show or solve our problem uh, design a polynomial time for our problem then so will all these problems in this class will have a poly time algorithm so we will like to take this concept and try to implement uh, the same concept in the world of parameterized complexity so so uh, fellows and downey in 1992 laid this foundation for parameterized complexity and then so th this was the picture and they showed that independent say belongs to xp that we just now saw but it is not an fpt okay so and actually independent set is complete for a class called w1 which so there is a hierarchy of class like w1 w2 so on and so forth but for our purposes it is just more than enough to show the problem is complete or hard for some w classes because once a problem belongs to any of the w classes uh, we can infer the problem does not admit an algorithm uh, with uh, running time f of k poly n with respect to the parameter which we have shown the problem to be w hard so showing a problem to be w1 hard or any w2 hard or w3 hard implies a non existence of fpt algorithm with respect to the considered parameter okay so uh, they just w1 independent set is w1 complete and then once we have a problem which is w1 complete uh, we can start coming up with a uh, proper reductions to show other problems to be w1 hard okay so for example so here is a research flow chart so we ask a question is the problem xp no np complete for fixed k bad luck yes then we ask a question is it fpt no w1 hard bad luck yes then we are happy so look at click input is a graph g integer k question is is there a vertex set s such that cardinality of s is at least k and every pair of vertices in f are adjacent right so basically click means you are you have a say k size vertex and for every vertex every pair of vertex there is an edge so this is a triangle this is a four length click and so on and so forth okay this is a five size click so on and so forth definitely for this also exists an algorithm with running time n to the power k into k square you look at all k size subset and for every k size subset you look at pair for every pair of vertices check its adjacency okay if they are all adjacent then you have found the click what do you think this problem is uh, easy like can it admit an fpt algorithm or it is w1 hard well click is w1 hard and here is a very simple reduction what will happen if we had an fpt algorithm for click let's see then we can design an fpt algorithm for independent set as follows so given a graph g comma k i will take a complement of g comma k basically what is the complement of g comma k it basically uh, u comma v is in g bar edge of g bar if and only if u comma v is not an element of eg so basically you have taken a graph g okay and all the edges in the complement of g or like if an edge is present here then that particular edge is not present in g bar and if a, if of some pair of vertex which are not adjacent in g are adjacent in g bar now what can you say about it if you had an independent set of size k here what is the property these guys for any pair of vertices they do not have an edge but so in g bar what will happen they will have an edge so if i had an fpt algorithm f of k n to the power c algorithm for g bar k for a click then what can i do i take an instance g g comma k and convert it to an instance of a click and say run that fpt algorithm for click and once you give me a k size click i can go back to my original instance and hey i have an independent set in my original graph g right so if i give me an algorithm here i can design an algorithm for independent set so what we have shown uh, from this reduction is that we cannot hope to have an fpt algorithm for click because having an fpt algorithm for click 
would immediately imply having an FP diagonal for independent set, and which is which contradicts to our assumption that independent set is W one hard. Uh, others just wait for a few seconds. Okay, you will see in a minute. Okay, and then you, that will give an answer to your question. Okay, so let's try to give a reduction from independent set to vertex cover. Now, I would like to reduce independent set to vertex cover. So G has an independent set of size at least k, if and only if G has a vertex cover of size at most n minus k. Right. So this is also fairly uh, fairly proper reduction. In terms of poly time, right? So this reduction can be actually made in polynomial time, right? But now, what is the problem with this reduction? So, so suppose I, I know we just now saw a two power k plus n plus m time algorithm for vertex cover, right? But what will that be here, right? Because if you are looking for an independent set of size k, right? So basically, k has become n minus k, right? So if I'm going to apply on G, if I wanted to get an independent set of size K, I'm trying to find a vertex cover of size at most N minus K. For a vertex cover, I have an algorithm with running time. Uh, oh no, sorry. Okay. Uh, so now I, on this, I apply this algorithm, but for vertex cover, I have an algorithm with running time two power K N plus N. But now this k becomes n minus k. So I can, with the help of this, I can design an algorithm for independent set, but with running time to power n minus k. Now I have no idea how n and k are related. Okay. And so this is not an FPD, right? So it is important that in the reduction, the Uh, Anthony, yes, I mean, it does, uh, like in theory, we would like to show, uh, uh, look, so if you show the problem is hard for some larger P, you cannot show the problem is hard for a smaller P. You get my point? Uh, so what I mean to show, if you can show that the problem is hard for W1, okay? You cannot show that the problem is hard for W2. A problem which is hard for W1 may not be hard for W2, but a problem which is hard for W2 could be hard for W1, right? So I would rather say that you try to show which is the largest P for which the problem is WP hard, uh, uh, is WI hard. Okay. So for example, uh, uh, for example, there are problems which are complete for W1, so for example, independent set, and there's a problem here, dominating set, which is W2 hard, right? I'm only talking about hardness, okay? So there is a reduction from independent set to dominating set, but there cannot have a reduction from dominating set to independent set because then that would imply a collapse of the class W1 and W2. And we do not think that these classes are, we believe that these classes are properly separated. Of course, we don't know how to prove it yet. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so now getting back to our independent set and vertex cover, others, does that answer your question that not any reduction would imply uh, hardness in terms of W1, but a reduction where K must go to some f of k, which could be any function f of k. And the running time allowed is also some g of k into poly in n. And you will see a bit more clarity about these reductions and how it is done in the last lecture today, okay? But just to give you flavor how things goes, okay? So it is important in our hardness reduction that the parameter of interest goes uh, becomes some other parameter of interest, like it is only a function of the parameter, not the function of the input side, which is a perfectly valid reduction when it comes to, uh, let's say, uh, polynomial time minimum reduction. But in parameterized complexity, it is important that the parameter 
remains some other function of the same parameter. That's, but however, we allow the running time also to be FPT, uh, FPT uh, when we take this. Yes, uh, a problem which is W2 hard, we believe it cannot be W1 hard. Yes, this is true. A problem which is W2 hard, yes. Yes, this is true. We do not believe it to be W1 hard. Unless this class has collapsed. Okay, so going, uh, Uh, what do you mean by converse to? Yes, a problem. W2 hard cannot. Yes, yes, sorry, my mistake. Okay, a W2 complete, uh, W2 complete cannot be W1 complete. Okay, let me say, let me, let's not get confused. Let me be clear. Look, a problem which is W1 hard cannot become W2 hard, but the problem which is W2 hard is also W1 hard, okay? Okay, this is what it means. A problem which is hard for class W2 is also hard for class W1, okay? A, class, a problem which is hard for class W1 is not hard for W2. Yes, Dusan, you are right, uh, okay? So let me write it down here. Hard for WP implies hard for WP prime for all P prime less than equal to P and hard for WP does not imply hard for WP double prime where P double prime is strictly greater than P. Okay, I hope this is clear. Okay, so for example, as I told you, there is a reduction from uh, dominating set to independent set, but we do not expect a reduction from independent set to dominating set. Okay, thanks Dusan and thanks Ixin. Okay, so now let's consider click parameter. So click parameterized by maximum degree. So you're, a gra you're given a graph G of maximum degree de delta and integer K. Question. Is there a vertex set S such that cardinality of S is at least K and every pair of vertices in S are adjacent. So now graph at a maximum degree Delta, suppose Delta is 10, what can you say? Well, then the algorithm is fairly simple. For every vertex V, look for the largest click inside its neighborhood, right? Because any click containing V is contain, contains V and a subset of vertex from its neighborhood. Now, if its neighborhood is upper bounded by Delta, then the running time will be two power delta for a particular vertex and there are n vertex. So we are going to check n neighborhoods. So the total running time is two power delta times n. Now this is FPT, right? So what did we learn from here? So for same problem, different parameters, right? Could lead to a different outcome. So click is W1 hard, no F of K poly time algorithm, a poly in input size algorithm. So what does it mean? Click parameterized by solution size K is W1 hard. But when we had O two power delta N time algorithm, what we say, click parameterized by maximum degree delta is FPT. So this leads us to uh, the following variation. Like there are many different way of parameterizing the same problem and no single one is the right one. People generally use solution size, but in different fields, so what is the means of solution is not clear. In computational geometry, dimension plays a very crucial role. In machine learning, dimension plays crucial role. And there, dimension is the right parameter. In many fields, accuracy plays a very important parameter. Then, like for example, p says or e p says, there, epsilon, one over epsilon becomes a parameter. So for different problem and different situation, we search for different parameters and design algorithms for the same. We will see one or two more examples of this uh, in coming slides. 
So parameterized problem. So now let me formally define parameterized decision problem. It's a subset of sigma star cross natural numbers, right? So for example, sigma star will correspond to graph. So like what is click parameterized solution size? It is a it is a s comma k s encodes a graph g and and g has a click of size at least k. So the second part of our input we generally use for a parameter. Click parameterized by max degree, it is s comma delta, s encodes a graph g, an integer k, and g has a max degree delta, less than or equal to delta, and click of size at least k. So here, delta, the second input uh, is the parameter. So this is why for parameterized decision problem, we believe that we have a tuple. You are right, uh, Sohan. So different kinds of parameterizations are I mean, yeah, are considered different problems. You're right. I mean, yeah, so we would consider different problems, indeed. Because if you think of a language, language is sigma cross, sigma cross this. So different parameter, we should consider them as a different problems. You're right. OK, so here is our research flowchart. Uh, we have already seen that this now we have added one more thing so here it was coloring number of colors independent set parameter by solution size click parameter by solution size and vertex cover parameter by solution size with fpt so what we learned well if the problem is w1 hard with respect to some parameter you try new parameter and you get into the same set of questions right with respect to the new parameter right so for example by this we got click parameter by maximum degree Right. So the same question we could also have asked with respect to problems which not, may not even have an XP algorithm. Could they be FPT parameterized by new parameter? Yes. Right. And similarly for vertex, like similarly for problems that are FPT, you could still for them also you could consider new parameter and study them. Okay. And in last decade or so, or last five, six, or last decade. There has been lots and lots of study of problems uh, parameterized by different sets of objects, a tree width, click width. So those relates to a width parameter, but even like vertex cover, feedback vertex head, uh, deletion distance to some uh, easy class of uh, triviality, like you name it, okay? And this has led to lots of interesting results, lots of interesting techniques. So it's a fruitful objective in itself, okay? So now let's consider k coloring parameterized by vertex cover, right? So input is a graph G, integer k, and set x subset of VG such that x is a vertex cover of G, okay? And integer x cardinality of x, and so this is our parameter, right? X. Does G have a proper k coloring? And our parameter is x. FPT now will mean what? Not f of k, the coloring question, but it is f of x where x is the vertex cover, right? So this is how we can, this is a very simple algorithm for k coloring parameterized by vertex cover. So how does the graph looks like? x is a vertex cover and this is an i independent set. So we just check, is x plus one less than equal to k? Then we can say yes, why? Because for every vertex in vertex cover, you assign one like separate color and for the independent set outside, you just assign one color. So you have used x plus one, and if this is less than or equal to k, you say yes. Otherwise, you assume that k is at most x. Now you branch on k power x coloring of x, right? What is the meaning of branch on k power x coloring of x? So if there exists a k coloring of the whole graph, then there exists a k coloring of x. So you enumerate all possible k power x coloring of x. And now for a fixed coloring, you check whether you could, you check. So basically you have, this is a particular partition or coloring of x. Now you ask yourself, well, can I add the vertices of i to this color classes? What can I do? I just look at a vertex in i and I check, is there a color class which does not have any of my neighbor? Then go and put it greedily. Right? It wouldn't matter because this greedy procedure is perfectly fine because every vertex in I 
does not have an edge between themselves. So it now the problem becomes basically placing every vertex into a color class which doesn't contain any of its neighbor. And this we can do greedily, right? So this will take running time how much? Uh, guessing this coloring k power x, and for each guessing, checking whether the vertices of i can be accommodated or not, right? So we can test whether graph has a k coloring or not in basically uh, order x time x into n plus m running time. Okay. Uh, there is so far we have only seen the solution size as the parameter of the vertex cover, right? But there are more to it. So there is also people have used alternative parameter where parameter is mu is solution size minus maximum matching of jig. Why it is important? Well, notice that mu can be very small even if solution size is big. Because imagine if a graph has a maximum matching n by two, for example, if graph has a perfect matching, then any minimum vertex cover will definitely take at least n by two vertices, right? So it's possible that, but it might, it might be taking n by two plus hundred vertices, right? Maybe the minimum vertex cover size is maximum matching plus some hundred, right? So if I look at a vertex cover size, it is very, very big, but this parameter is just hundred, right? So mu can be very small, even if the solution size is very big. And so this is called above guarantee vertex cover input in G comma K. Does there exist a vertex cover S of size at most K? But our parameter of interest is k minus mm of g, where mm of g is a side of maximum matching in g. Now, FPT means f of this parameter, k minus mm of g n to the power c time. And so there is a known result. This is a still uh, best known. And it, I think it was proved in 2012 that for this problem, there is an algorithm with running time 2.32 k minus mmg. Yes. So notice that now if I ask you if a graph has a perfect matching n by 2 and ask you, hey, do you have a vertex cover of n by 2 plus 100, then actually this is a poly time algorithm. Right? So, yeah. So, and this, you get some very interesting and nice properties of linear programming and how they are related to solution. And many much, much more stronger generalization of this result has happened uh, in context of uh, uh, branching with LPs and other things uh, lately. So here's our research flow chart again. Okay. So now we have coloring uh, parameter. Uh, so this is what we had. Now we added click uh, coloring parameterized by vertex cover is FPT. Vertex cover parameterized by solution size minus MMG. So different parameters leads to different question. So let's ask our question faster independence. So we have order n to the power k k square time algorithm. And we know that there is no FPT algorithm, but there is still much room for progress between this and just saying that there is no algorithm with running time f of k poly in n. And there is indeed a faster independent set. And it was by Nesetriel, Poljak in 1985. And they actually gave an algorithm with running time n to the power omega k by three, where omega is the constant of matrix multiplication. I think which is currently some 2.3 and some places of this month, I think, no, 2.23 and some places of this month. Okay, and then that is n to the power 0 0.79 K. And uh, hint, it's a not very fast, uh, not very difficult problem. So you can uh, get it from here, the triangle if and only if trace of uh, you take the adjacency matrix of A, take the cube is not equal to zero. And from there, you can derive this algorithm. So faster vertex cover, we have this two power k squared plus n plus m time algorithm. We know that it does not have polynomial time. There's an easy 1.47 to the power k plus n plus m algorithm. And uh, Chen and Kanj in, again, some 10 years back had given an algorithm with running time 1.274 to the power k plus n plus m. But uh, so this is our research flow chart. Now the question is better FPT and be like, we go on better XP, yes. Like keep going on, uh, but can we just keep improving these results? Like from two to 1.47 to 1.27 or is there a limit to which we can improve these algorithms? 
So for example, can we do independent setting time, say n to the power 0.1 k or maybe n to the power 0.11 k? What about n to the power root k? Can we do vertex cover in time to to the power 0.1 k n to the power c or maybe two to the power 0.001 k or maybe two power root k? I mean, these are very natural questions. Like, can we keep improving in constants or even asymptotically? And then there was a exponential time hypothesis by Impagliazzo, Patiri, and Zen, and who showed uh, what they call exponential time hypothesis. They this is a hypothesis which they made that there exists epsilon greater than zero, such that three sat has no big O of two power epsilon n time algorithm, right? So there exists an epsilon such that you cannot get any algorithm better than two power epsilon n, which in other words, it also implies there is no two to the power little o of n time algorithm for three sat. Okay. So starting from here, People started to design ETH-based lower bounds. It was first made by Kai and Zudas, who showed that assuming the ETH that exists epsilon greater than zero, says that there is no two power epsilon K poly N time algorithm for vertex cover and many, many more problems. Basically just trace the NP completeness reduction and you are good. So then this, uh, this was made fashionable by a lot of people chain, uh, Jia, Fellows, Khan, Huang and Joets in 2004 or five. And uh, they showed that there exists epsilon greater than zero such that there is no f of k n to the power epsilon k time algorithm for independent set. And lately, uh, there has been a program, uh, optimality program in parameterized complexity where our goal is to take a problem and try to devise or derive uh, algorithm with matching lower bound running time. Right? So we can show that, hey, here's the running time of my algorithm and asymptotically we cannot do anything better. So for example, for graph coloring and vertex cover, we saw this algorithm with running time x power x. And uh, way back in 2011, we showed that there exists epsilon greater than zero, such that there is no x to the power epsilon x n to the power c time algorithm for graph coloring. So essentially the algorithm which you just now saw is a uh, is a very good algorithm, right? Uh, like you cannot improve it. That's the best possible we can have, right? Maybe you can, you have like, we got X power X. Maybe one can do maybe X to the power X by 10, but you cannot have X power X log X, for example, right? So asymptotic improvement is not possible. Okay, so uh, better FPT, I mean, if you can improve better XP, uh, like you can show no by showing an ETH lower bounds. What is the limitation of ETH? Uh, exists epsilon greater than zero such that no two to the power epsilon F of K poly and time algorithm. So far lower bounds under ETH are all on the form of this, okay? But how to distinguish between say two power K and 1.99 to the power K, okay? And so this leads to what is called strong exponential time hypothesis. Uh, by which for several problems, we can even show that, well, the base of the constant or exponent is good, right? So you can distinguish, for example, uh, just to give you a head start. So for vertex cover parameterized by tree width, we have two power tree width algorithm. And of course there's a problem, but we can show that two minus epsilon to the power tree width is not possible unless Seth fails. Now, what is Seth? So let me tell you what Seth is just. So Seth basically means, look, ETH is about three sat, okay? Seth is like just sat, no upper bound on clauses. Okay? And we know that it has two power N algorithm, right? Just try all possible, uh, what do you call? Uh, try all possible instantiation of variables and check if, and it just says that you do not have two minus epsilon to the power n algorithm for any epsilon. Okay, I mean, right? So I can, I do not hope to get an algorithm for SAT, which is better than say two power n. I mean, I do not even hope to have an algorithm with running time 1.99 to the power n. Okay, 
and there are more to come i mean i just gave you a some uh, overview of like but there are like you can get restricting restricting input connection to approximation schemes kernels and kernel lower bound apt approximation and inapproximability approximate kernels and lower bounds connection to polynomial connection to polynomial time uh, can we take like can we uh, can we reduce the dependence on the input size then there is also a whole program about can we uh, reduce the dependence on the input size at the same time having a good running time in terms of ffk so like there are several research directions and in this uh, program we will focus on many of these things so first to uh, first one day is, first day is to bring you up to the speed but uh, hopefully uh, as we progress the after christmas most of things are slightly more uh, let's say uh, recent and modern techni technology that is being utilized in parameterized complexity, FPT approximation, and things of this nature. So just to let me point out, so we do not have any lecture on branching. We hope that all of you know, but after Neil's lecture, we'll poll, we will have a poll, okay? Uh, whether to have a branching lecture or not, okay? And so you can poll, if you wish to have, then tomorrow, an hour before our usual schedule, or maybe one and a half hour before the usual schedule, we can have a branching lecture for people who would like to have uh, uh, knowledge about this, but that is not uh, mandatory. So with that, I would like to conclude my lecture. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sakit. So we conclude with the first talk of our uh, workshop and first talk of this session.